Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Mercantilism refers to an economic policy or trade system, wherein a country focuses on maintaining a favorable trade balance by maximizing exports and minimizing imports with other countries. Its purpose is to empower a nation via wealth and resource acquisition, while improving its military and political might. As one of the earliest trade policies, mercantilism played a critical role in guiding countries' international trade. So what is its historical background? What are the major characteristics and examples of mercantilism? Why did it decline after the 18th century and rise again in recent years? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. Historical Background Mercantilism was a popular economic school of thought in Europe between the 16th and 18th centuries, but it wasn't officially named until Adam Smith released his book The Wealth of Nations in 1776. He highlighted how European powers aimed to restrict imports, whilst actively encouraging exports. The aim was to bring gold and silver into the country and thereby stimulate domestic employment. This was a period of religious and commercial warfare, but also the Age of Discovery, which saw the British, French, and Spanish empires expand rapidly across the world. As empires expanded, gold became more and more important for two major reasons. First, gold was needed to fund the empire's military. Second, gold was widely considered a sign of wealth and power. As colonies grew, it meant there was a more interconnected system of trade. For example, Britain had links to Australia, India, Canada, and significant parts of Africa. Similarly France had colonies in Africa, North America, and parts of Asia. The world was becoming interconnected and each imperialist had an incentive to keep trade going between the colonies and itself. The colonies were important to France, Britain, and Spain, which had fewer raw materials. For instance, Britain relied on its colonies to provide goods such as sugar, tobacco, tropical fruits, and gold. The idea was that a nation's colony would provide raw materials that would then be converted into final goods and sold at a higher price. This would then provide a favorable balance of trade to the mother country and enhance its gold stock. Section 2. Characteristics. In general, the mercantilism has following characteristics. Number 1. Accumulation of gold. Gold was associated with wealth and power. It not only allowed nations to pay for soldiers and expand the empire, but also for its symbolism of wealth. Gold mines were in short supply in colonist nations such as Great Britain, France, and Spain, so they relied on their colonist nations to provide its supply. By procuring raw materials from the colonies, it would convert them to final goods and sell them back for a profit in gold. Number 2. Belief that wealth is static. At the heart of mercantilism was the belief that wealth was static. As gold was rare, it was seen that there is only a limited supply. So importing more from one nation than it exported meant it was losing wealth. In other words, one nation could only benefit at another's expense. Number 3. Large population. According to mercantilist theory, a large population was necessary to supply labor, markets, and an army to the nation. The larger the nation, the more wealth it could accumulate and the bigger its army. So larger populations were associated with an increase in a nation's prosperity. Number 4. Positive balance of trade. Mercantilists believed that by exporting more than they imported, they would be able to acquire a net accumulation of wealth from other nations. However, by contrast, if the nation brought more goods from abroad, it was essentially sending gold, wealth, and power abroad. Number 5. Reliance on colonies. Colonists relied on their colonies, not only for raw materials, but to ensure a net transfer of wealth and gold. In the long term, this helped finance further expansion across the globe. More importantly, it helped the mother nation become self-reliant. Number 6. State monopolies. The state had a monopoly in the fact that it was the only nation able to supply to its colonies. This was because its mother nations relied on it for raw materials, whereby they were converted into final goods and sold back at a profit. The result was a net transfer in gold from the colonies to the colonists. Number 7. Trade Barriers. Many empires enforced a ban on trade between their colonists as well as that of other empires. For instance, when Britain had control over India, it was banned from trading with other colonies such as Australia or Canada. At the same time, many nations imposed tariffs to make imports more expensive and uncompetitive. Section 3. Examples. Mercantilism is a form of protectionism that was practiced throughout the Age of Discovery, 16th-18th centuries. 
Here are a few notable examples. 1. British Navigation Act 1651. In 1651, the British government, led by Oliver Cromwell, introduced legislation that made it illegal for any foreign ship to carry goods from or to any of its colonies. All trade was to be conducted by a British ship with a British owner, master, and majority crew. 2. Colbertism. Colbertism was named after Jean-Baptiste Colbert, first minister of state in France between 1661 and 1683. It refers to the number of mercantilist policies implemented during his time in office. He introduced tariffs, encouraged public works programs, and set up the France Merchant Navy in the bid to expand exports abroad. 3. East India Company. In 1600, the British government created the East India Company which was a state-sponsored monopoly looking to take advantage of the Asian markets, particularly the East Indian spice trade. It not only brought gold back to Britain, but also helped establish a strong and permanent trade route between Britain and her colonies. Section 4. The Decline and Aresen Tries. The flaw with mercantilism was that it viewed trade as a zero-sum game. Under a mercantilist system, the restriction of imports meant consumers obtained access to fewer goods at higher prices. By the end of the 18th century, scholars, such as Adam Smith and David Hume, began to evaluate and critique the merits of mercantilist theory. Contrary to established beliefs, the scholars realized that wealth was not finite but could be created through the productive allocation of labor. When countries specialize in the production of goods for which they enjoy a comparative advantage, trade can result in mutually beneficial deals. Although mercantilism is mostly viewed as an outdated economic theory, there has been an emergence of mercantilist policies in recent times. Present-day mercantilism typically refers to protectionist policies that restrict imports to support domestic industries. It can sometimes be referred to as neo-mercantilism. Arguments supporting the restriction of free trade in certain circumstances. First, tariffs in response to domestic subsidies. Supporters argue that since China's steel is effectively subsidized leading to a glutton supply, it is necessary and fair to impose tariffs on imports of Chinese steel to protect domestic producers from unfair competition. Second, protection against dumping. If some countries have an excess supply of goods, they can sell at a very low price to get rid of the surplus. But, this can make domestic firms unprofitable. Protectionism can be justified to protect against this dumping. Third, the infant industry argument. For countries seeking to diversify their economy, tariffs may be justified to try and develop new industries. When the industries have developed and benefited from economies of scale, then the tariffs and protectionism can be dropped. Modern mercantilist policies include tariffs on imports, subsidizing domestic industries, devaluation of currencies, and restrictions on the migration of foreign labor. According to the Western media, China is the nation that institutes the most mercantile policies. Many other countries, such as the US, Russia, and India, also engage in mercantilism to some degree. All right, that's all for today's topic. So, what do you think about mercantilism? Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.